Okay, so what I want to do now in the last few minutes of this lecture is uh, I want to focus our attention on just the distance idea here, independently of the notion of a norm. And it, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at this point because the, def, the, 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 um, the notion of distance is actually defined uh, in terms of the norm. But let's take an example and see, what, see, where, see where this goes, see what I'm talking about here. So this is an example. The, let's actually start by saying that we have a set. Uh, this is okay. Let's say the discrete metric on a set X, any set X, could be a vector space, could be R, could be Rn, could be any kind of a set, a finite set. A discrete metric on a set X is the function, well, I shouldn't say it's, yeah, it's the function from X cross X into R plus defined by the distance between, now it's going to be the distance between any two elements of, of x, x cross x, so I have to have two elements here, the distance between uh, a pair of elements is zero if x and y are the same element, and it's one in every other case where the two elements are actually distinct elements. Now, uh, let me say as an aside that uh, just last week we had a visitor, Amir Kamenitsa, from the University of Chicago, uh, here in the department, gave a uh, talk, a presentation of a paper he's uh, working on and I believe hasn't completed yet. Uh, the paper was about the uh, the cultural distance between different demographic groups. And so the paper was, was uh, addressing defining some notion of the cultural distance and then being able to measure and do some analysis with this notion of cultural distance. And so uh, let me... Uh, just write his name down here. You can actually look him up on the web or at the Chicago uh, Booth School of Business uh, faculty. Uh, you aren't going to be able to find this paper right now as I'm uh, recording this lecture, but by the time you see the lecture, the paper may actually be available. Uh, and let me just point out, though, that the, that the actual cultural distance that uh, Kamenitsa defines and uses isn't this distance here, but it's related to it. And he did in the talk, in the paper, there is a point where he does use this metric, this discrete metric on a set. And the set is a set of uh, actually individual people. So that's just an aside. So we have this notion of the discrete metric on any set could be a vector space, could be R n, could be R. Let's say as a uh, remark that uh, the function, the function d, let's write this down here, satisfies the four properties that we proved as a theorem about the notion of distance when it is defined in terms of 
the norm in a vector space. But of course here, this X could be any set. It doesn't have to be a vector space. And so right away, we would say, well, um, the fact that this satisfies D1 to D4 has to be proved because this isn't coming from a norm. If it was just coming from a norm, then we've already proved that the distance defined from a norm satisfies D1 to D4. So this we have to prove directly simple, really simple, almost too simple to, for an exercise. Um, but you can prove that, that this discrete metric satisfies D1 to D4. But let's also point out that this metric, this distance idea, could not come, actually couldn't come from a norm on a vector space. So let's just say here, remark, Uh, even if, uh, let's say it this way, on a vector space V, we can of course define the discrete metric because we can define it on any set, but on a vector space V, I'll just call it dm, the discrete metric can't be uh, defined from a norm whoop, on V uh, by So what this says is even if we are in a vector space and we have a norm, this distance function will satisfy d1 to d4 all right, but it will not be a distance function that comes from any norm on the vector space. Let's actually prove this to a simple little result. Let's say, suppose a dxy is equal to the norm x minus y uh, for some given norm on a vector space. Then we'll say let x be a vector in the vector space, not the zero vector, and let y be two times the vector x. Because we're in a vector space, it makes sense to talk about the zero vector and a vector not being the zero vector, and it makes sense to talk about a scalar times the vector x. So then what do we have? Because by one of the uh, properties of the norm, n3, n3 says that the norm It has to be the case that the norm of y is going to be 2 times the norm of x. That's exactly what N3 says. So the norm of y has got to be 2 times the norm of x. But then what do we have? We have that uh, the norm uh, of x is equal to um, the distance between x and the zero vector. And since the x is not the zero vector, they're distinct, then that distance is 1. And the norm of y is the norm of y minus the zero vector, and that's one. But if this comes from the norm, then this is the distance between uh, x and the origin. And, th um, well, no, I take it back. Let's just take this off. This then 
says that it must be the case that the norm of x is 1, the norm of y is 1, and therefore uh, we have a contradiction because this says the norm of y is 2 times the norm of x. So now we have a contradiction. So indeed, it cannot be the case that the distance comes from a norm. So have this. And so what we have then is a whole new notion of, uh, dist of distance. And it, a notion of distance that doesn't necessarily, uh, doesn't have to be in a vector space. And even if it is, doesn't come from uh, the norm. And so this suggests that there may be other notions of distance between points, between elements of a set, that might be useful. So here we have, yet again, the same thing that we had with a vector space. We started, getting, we started by getting a result, a theorem, about uh, vector addition and multiplication. The theorem said that those operations satisfied the properties V1 to V8. We found other situations that also satisfied those properties, so we elevated those properties to a definition of a new idea, a vector space. Then, just a few minutes ago, we had the notion of a norm on a vector space. We showed that the Euclidean norm, the Max norm, the Beijing norm, uh, all of those norms on Rn satisfied the conditions of the, the, the properties n1 to n4. And so we said, well, let's just elevate those properties n1 to n4 to a definition of a norm. And then we'll be able to use any results that we can prove about norms every time we encounter a new norm or any of the norms we're already using. Here we have that again. So here we'll say we will elevate the four properties d1 to d4 of distance in a vector space defined from a norm in a vector space. We'll elevate those properties to simply the definition of a new concept and that's what we're doing here. Here I've focused, I've taken away the vector space part, the norm part, and I've just left, oh, the definition of distance is the norm, but now let's just change that. Let's elevate the properties D1 to D4 to a definition of a metric. So we call any function D from the Cartesian product of a space with itself, anytime we have a set and a function like this, uh, if, it satis if the function satisfies D1 to D4, we call it a metric. And we call the space, I didn't write that here in the definition, we call the space consisting of the set X together with the metric that's defined on it, we call that a metric space. And so again, just as with the vector spaces, just as with norms on a vector space, here too, we can derive properties that any metric, any measure of distance between points has that comes from just the properties D1 to D4, and those will apply anytime we have some notion of distance, like Emir did when he used the discrete metric uh, in the paper that he presented here just last week. Here we define something called the discrete metric and now this remark together with this new definition, this remark could be rewritten to say that the discrete metric is a metric, which is a good thing, <laughs> all right? So uh, this tells us that the, the, the discrete metric we define here is indeed a metric according to this definition. And then one last thing, and I will put this up here above the definition, and that is another remark, and that is that
a normed vector space, that would be a vector space V together with a norm on it, a normed vector space actually is a metric space. Uh, uh, with D with the distance defined by distance between X and Y is the norm of X minus Y. So this just says that what we already know that if we have a vector space and we have a norm on it and we define distance uh, between pairs of vectors in terms of the norm, then uh, it will satisfy D1 to D4, and according to this definition, that makes it a metric space. That makes this a space with a metric, so a metric space. That's it, I think, for uh, our lecture today. Uh, we will use each of these ideas, uh, I think, starting very quickly, either in the next lecture or the lecture after, we'll be using uh, several of these ideas. So that's it for today. Uh, see you all next time.